Now we will focus on the architecture of online applications and leave offline applications for the end of the course. To examine the underlying architecture and solutions for smart devices with Genexus, let's start with what we know, web applications. Also, let's make a comparison that will allow us to understand it better. On one hand, we have a server. On the other, we have a client. In the server, we have the web application and in the client, we have a browser. We run the web application from a URL that runs, for example, work with countries. This web panel object queries the database and returns the data to the client. For the browser to build the layout that will be displayed to the user as an HTML that responds to his request. If we want the application to run on a smart device, why should we implement a specific solution instead of doing it online through the browser of the device itself? Actually, we want the application to interact with the device's own features, such as the address book, calendar, and so on. Also, we want its look and feel to be similar to the other native applications as we've seen before. So we continue to work only with the web application. In general, if we want some of the application's objects that process and return structured data, such as transactions as business components, procedures, or data providers, if we want them to be consumed by other programs, not necessarily implemented by Genexus, through the internet, from a notebook, PC, or smart device, a good solution is to expose them as REST web services. In this way, they will be application APIs, making up a service layer. In this case, we're inside a REST design architecture, which considers these programs as resources. With the URL of any of these web services, any program that accesses the internet will be able to invoke them through the HTTP protocol, with the get, post, put, delete methods as appropriate. The service will be run on the server, accessing the database. For example, we can think of a data provider that returns a collection of country flags and names, and then running it as a response. The client invokes this URL and returns a JSON to the client with that collection of countries. Also, the client will have to be able to decode that JSON to do what is required with its information. In this way, if the client is run on a smart device and it accesses metadata, probably in the server itself, that contains the entire data to build the work with element interface, among other things, it'll know how to build the layout of work with country from the JSON received with the data, and it will be able to show the list on the device. This will be the solution we're looking for. The metadata of the smart device application will contain the entire data of the application, what dashboards, work with for smart devices elements, and panels it implements, as well as the web service URIs to obtain the required data from the database. This is in order to build the application interface in the device and respond to the actions run by the user on the device. The metadata will be stored on the web server. Two options are available to prototype. Run a special browser created by Genexus, the KBN, or install the compiled application. We will study both solutions. Let's begin by the KBN. It's a native application compiled in the platform language created by Genexus. It allows navigating smart device applications created with Genexus as if it were a browser. It does this by selecting a URL corresponding to a main object of the application recorded in the metadata. In this way, it will allow working with the entities and relationships that make up the part of the Genexus application for smart devices that depends on this main object. It's a light interpreter that contains the logic to read the metadata of the corresponding URL, as well as the application images. In addition, 
it'll be able to decode all that information, invoking, if necessary, the REST web services required to obtain the responses with data in order to build the corresponding interface on the device, which is displayed to the user. For example, in the metadata, it reads that it must begin by the event date dashboard, which has certain images, a certain interface, layout, and certain options. It builds the interface and displays it on the device. When the client taps on the option, it contains the URI or URL from the metadata to run the resource. In the example, Countries, a data provider that returns the list of countries by querying the database, the KBN runs it via HTTP, REST, and in this way, it accesses the database to obtain the collection of countries in a JSON. This JSON is returned as a response to the KBN, which, after accessing the metadata, has everything necessary to build the screen display to the user on the device. Likewise, tapping on an element from the list, such as Uruguay, will call the data provider that returns the country's details to build the view screen. Next, if an update or delete operation is made, or an insert from the list, the edit screen is drawn. And when trying to save, the REST service invoked will be the business component. It will try to run the corresponding operation over the database, and will return the operation's result to the caller. If it failed, the error messages occurred will be displayed to the user on the device screen. If it was successful, the corresponding message will be shown. That was the first option, using the KBN, that as we said, is not the recommended option, especially for Android because the KBN is an interpreter and it will not allow us to interact with all the device's features. In addition, it will not provide all the features that compiled applications have. The second option is to compile the application in the device language and install it on the device. Each smart device platform has its own language, and therefore, its own extension for the compiled file. For example, the extension for Android is APK. This file must be downloaded and installed on the device. After that, the KBN interpreter will no longer be necessary. It'll encapsulate the entire metadata and images. So, we will download and install it on the device. This compiled file will contain the entire logic and metadata, and the server will only have to be accessed to run the REST services that return the data from the database. To compile the Android application, we only have to set the startup object, for example, the event day dashboard, in the environment properties, like c -sharp environment. In this case, pressing F5 will no longer generate the web application. Therefore, the browser will not be opened, and only this object, the dashboard, and all the objects that depend on it will be compiled instead. This compiled file will be saved in the server, and from there we will be able to download it to install the app on the device. Or, if we're using the emulator, it will be opened directly in the emulator.